I'm Paul Levinson, and welcome to Light On, Light Through, episode 363, my review of The Lazarus Project, season one, that I saw a couple of weeks ago on TNT here in New York in the United States. So, a friend of mine in the UK, James Harris, who knows how much I enjoy time travel stories as a reader, a viewer, a reviewer, as an author, recommended The Lazarus Project to me and sent me a link to a trailer for its second season. Well, I figured I better watch the first season before I even watched a trailer for the second season. And I just did a few weeks ago watch that first season, and I thought it was brilliant. And then I discovered that although the second season has debuted in the UK in the month of November, it has not yet made it over to this side of the Atlantic. By the way, why TV series can't be released at the same time all around the world, don't ask me, I have no idea. But rather than keep complaining about that, I thought I'd tell you why I not only think the first season of The Lazarus Project, which I absolutely binged on TNT, is not only brilliant. But, you know, I'd say it's the best time travel series I've ever seen on television. So that's high praise. Okay, so let's get to the story. And, of course, there may be some slight spoilers ahead, but I'll try to be as general as possible. First, I thought the ambience was great reminiscent of Utopia, the UK version, and its unique mix of gravity and humor, life and death situations leavened with nonchalance. But it's the story and the attention it gives to the consequences of time travel that I think puts it at the very top. Here's the setup, and I'll enumerate this to make it as clear as possible. One, there's a time travel process, not a machine per se, but some kind of process, which isn't quite revealed, that sets time back to 12 midnight, July 1st, from whatever time the process is invoked in the subsequent year. So, if the switch or whatever is flipped right now, our world would go back to July 1st, 2023. And we and just about everyone in the world would be doing whatever we were doing on that midnight. Point two. Just about everyone in the world has no idea that this, the reversal in time, is happening. We have no idea we're going through this time a second, third, or who knows how many times. But A very few people, mutants, are aware of this groundhog syndrome, and a serum has been invented, discovered, which opens up the awareness of a few other people to these repetitions in time. Point number three. Numbers one and two that I just told you about are the basis of the Lazarus Project, which seeks to protect the world, or at least we humans in the world, from extinction-level events. And the head of the Lazarus Project, at least as far as we know, gives the order to invoke the time shift. Point number four. But remembering the lost time is a very heavy burden which can become excruciating in all kinds of ways. A baby born during a year that is later erased won't exist after the rollback. Imagine how the parents who remember that year, parents who are in the Lazarus Project, just imagine how they would feel. Or, 
If you lost any loved one during that year, you might well want the time set back as soon as possible to give you a chance to do something to prevent that death. Point five. But the problem is the Lazarus Project also has a principle of setting time back as infrequently as possible, and then only to derail a mass extinction event. To give an example that's mentioned early in this narrative, September 11th, 2001 didn't qualify as terrible as it was, but COVID did and the speed with which the vaccines were rolled out in our reality is cleverly explained as due to the Lazarus Project buying more time by literally setting back time, giving the microbiologists as much time as they needed to come up with our vaccines. You know, I really love those kinds of little flourishes in time travel stories where something which really happened turns out to be the result of something a time traveler did that nobody, except in this case a very few people, know about. That to me is the epitome of excellent storytelling in time travel stories. But okay, I'm not going to say any more about this first season because I'm coming close to spoiler territory. But I'll just also tell you that the acting and the production were excellent, and creds to Joe Barton, who wrote the narrative. I'll leave you with this recommendation. If you're a fan of time travel, make sure you see The Lazarus Project. Not only will you not be disappointed, you'll be glued to the screen and thrilled. And the good news is that if you want to see it again, you won't need some kind of switch back in time to do that. The Light on Light Through Podcast. And I hope you enjoyed this review of The Lazarus Project. I'll definitely be back here with a review of the second season whenever I get to see it on TNT. Unfortunately, I don't have the time to fly over to the UK to see it, and I guess I probably could see it, I don't know, somewhere by paying a lot of money, but as uh, listeners to this podcast may know, and as I've mentioned more than once, I'm a notorious cheapskate. But I promise you I'll have a review whenever I do get to second season up here on TNT, which I hope is soon as possible. And I'll certainly be back here next Tuesday afternoon. Tuesday afternoon. Wow, such a great Moody Blues song. I just love singing the first lines or any lines of it anytime I can. But I will be back here next Tuesday afternoon with another episode of Light On, Light Through. In the meantime, stay safe, stay sound, and keep doing whatever you can to help the brave people of Israel and Ukraine fight off the terrorists and fascists that are attacking their countries. The Light on Light Through Podcast. Athens, 2042 AD. She ripped the paper in half, then ripped the halves, then ripped what was left, again, into bits and pieces of history that could have been. Sierra Waters had read once that, years ago, it was thought that men made love for the thrill, while women made love for the sense of connection it gave them. Curled up with a good book says, Sierra Waters is sexy as hell. You can find out more about The Plot to Save Socrates by Paul Levinson at theplottosavesocrates.com. Paul Levinson spilled code about an ancient biotech war raging on in secret for centuries.